This morning in our Saturday session, William Patrick Corgan. For more than 20 years, he's been the front man of the Smashing Pumpkins, one of the most popular bands of all time. But he's also released two solo albums, the most recent just this month. We'll hear him perform in just a moment, but first we spoke with William at the Gibson Guitar Showroom here in New York. He was Billy when we first came to know him. Billy Corgan, the intense frontman of alt-rock smashing pumpkins. In the early 90s, he was a kid from the Chicago suburbs on a mission. I really wanted out. What did you want out of? Suburban malaise, strip malls, the pedantic sort of structure of middle-class life. Corgan saw music as his escape hatch. And everyone told me, you're wrong. You can't, you can't possibly do this. You don't have the talent, you don't have the voice. No one makes it. Look at your father. He didn't make it, my father was a musician. But he wasn't wrong. His band broke through in 1993 with the album Siamese Dream. The follow-up, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, went to number one and sold more than 10 million copies in the U.S. alone. When you had success, were you surprised by it? Mm -mm. No, not at all. I know it sounds terribly um, ungrateful, but no, I wasn't surprised at all. In fact, my mother told me she wasn't surprised 1%. Where did her faith come from? You'd have to ask her. See, that goes on the list of things I wished I'd asked my mother. Yeah. Corgan lost his mother to cancer in 1996. When you lose somebody quite young, you know, you look back and say, oh, I just, I wish I knew a little bit more about this one thing. It's like shadows, mm -hmm. so I have to guess. To what degree is, is your music an attempt to fill in shadows? It's an interesting question. I think my music is an attempt to reflect the inner world that I feel and that I believe in, but I see very little representation outwardly, which is a bit strange. It's a, like Wizard of Oz. Put your Corgan's new record, Ojilala, is his first solo album in more than a decade. And Billy has become William Patrick Corgan. You just decided you didn't want to be Billy anymore, was that? Uh, I just started to feel uncomfortable. It became kind of a weird, like a sign of my arrogance or something. And so once I saw that it irritated people and I thought, okay, I'm definitely gonna do this. <laughs> you liked irritating them? I like irritating people, yeah. And he's quite good at it espousing free speech and conspiracy theories the on controversial talk shows. Once we give up free speech in this country, it is over. I'm a natural contrarian. You like pushing back. I just think the world's a little too comfortable for itself, for its own good. We need clowns, we need weirdos, we need freaks. They keep the system in check. Corgan says he tried to walk away from music, but discovered he couldn't ended up pulling out an acoustic guitar and sort of starting over and saying, well, if I can prove to myself that I can still write a good song, then there's a reason to continue. Working with producer Rick Rubin, the songs took shape. Yeah, this is totally from the cosmos. Yeah, that feel pretty good? I'm suspicious. <laughs> Which means it felt good, you just didn't like the feeling? There you go, <laughs> so you're, fig you're figuring it out now.